when you trace back F1's hybridization, one of the developments that had the biggest impact on the sport was KERS. Now, this was introduced back in 2009, the kinetic energy recovery system, which allowed drivers to regeneratively brake and use that energy to, to power the car. AVL Racing was one of the companies that was strongly involved in that development back then, and I'm joined by Michael Russell and Matthias Dank to perhaps talk about it as a bit of a case study. Gentlemen, thank you for joining me. Michael, when Curs first came about, how did you hear about it and how were you able to implement uh, your company into developing a system? Well, actually, I uh, got a call from one of my friends at Formula One uh, at a team. He freaked out, say, hey, we have to do an electric motor now. I have no clue how to do it. And uh, this is when, when it all started. Uh, we had a little clue about this because of our road car uh, section uh, that we're doing battery and hybrid stuff since 15, 20 years at the time. So that helped us uh, to get up to speed internally on the racing department and then externally to our customers. And Matthias, was it, it, was it a technology that you perhaps already worked with and were you able to sort of quite easily implement a solution for use in Formula One? That's one of the advantages uh, of AVL Racing being embedded with AVL, as are the other motorsports industries. AVL Racing was not involved with hybrid or, or, or electric technology before that, but we had our colleagues from the passenger car, uh, road car, marine and uh, commercial powertrain departments that were already using hybrid and electric technologies since years. So we could tap into uh, that knowledge and into that technology and uh, educate ourselves pretty quickly. Uh, first thing you do is you basically build the curse into your simulation uh, tool and there's, I, I, I remember like yesterday there were so many options how to deploy energy, how to recover energy during qualifying sessions, during the race, during different phases of the race. So a simple, what was simple simulation back then just turned out in a, in a massive uh, variety freak show. And so when it came to developing that system, what were perhaps the biggest changes with regards to time, money? Did it, was it quite an expensive project? I wouldn't say it was an ex or more for us. Uh, obviously, we didn't get paid more than, uh, <laughs> uh, than uh, at the, in the good old days. But it brought an element of consideration that really paid off that we, we did all the, the studies before. We had uh, testing solutions uh, at that time. Uh, a lot of teams uh, struggled, as we remember, in, uh, in the old days in Barcelona, trying to get laps and laps or out of the pits then. Uh, testing at that time helped a lot, not uh, making a fool out of yourself at the racetrack. And Matthias, do you see that as sort of like a, a legacy moment in the sport? Do you look at that and feel proud of what you were able to achieve and were you able to carry things forward from that? Definitely I do. Uh, I think the biggest difference for the introduction of the curse system was are the development and rule changes before were rather evolutions. Um, and also for us that was the first starting point where we started trying out much more different things because it was not so well established. If you now get regulations out, build me a new race engine, you know basically what you start with. You know, if you go for a number of cylinders and displacement, you know basically what the combustion chamber will look like, and that is your starting point. But uh, introducing uh, back in 2009 the curse system, you, you had no starting point. You had so many different variants and technologies in, on how to build an e-motor, how to use a battery, what, what type of cell chemistry are you using, are we using batteries? Uh, are we using flywheel systems? Are we using supercaps? Even these different technologies were out there. So the starting point was much more diverse. Um, and by that, I think the simulation, and, and we really had to improve uh, our simulation to do concept simulation. Because if you have that huge variety, you need to trim down really quickly what are the paths that you are going to uh, explore then in the end. I guess it was a milestone situation at that time where traditional engine supplier moved into becoming a power unit supplier. Some caught by surprise, some well prepared. Uh, and the system integration of all the additional features was, was really a challenge. 